Hello and welcome to Ember's Reading Room. Yes, once again, it's that time. Bedtime Tales, written by Linda Jennings, illustrated by Hilda Offen. Today, we're starting with Surprise Party. Ooh, that's a lovely cake. Quite. I wonder if their ribbon's edible. I don't think it is based on the stuff that's underneath it. Well, that could all be fondant. Mm. Which is technically edible, but usually not tasty. Yeah, I, I've tried it. Samantha had invited ten friends to her birthday party. She was very excited about it. Just before the guests arrived, her mother sent her to the supermarket to buy some candles for the cake. They'll all be there when I get back, thought Samantha, skipping home. But when she arrived... There was no one there except Mom. My friends have forgotten to come, wailed Samantha. Nonsense, said Mom. They're all here if you look for them. Let's play hide and seek, shall we? So Samantha looked in the hall closet and found Bill. She looked behind the sofa and found Claire. Tina and Lori were behind the curtains and Tim was on the stairs. Very soon, all her ten guests had been found, together with the ten birthday presents they had brought her. This has been the best surprise party ever, cried Samantha, before blowing out the candles on her cake. I wouldn't call that a surprise party. Not at all. I would call it a hide-and-seek party. Quite, because she invited the friends to her birthday party. The party occurred at the time it was supposed to, and only the people who were invited were there. So, yeah, no surprises. Yeah, also, never throw a surprise party for an introvert. Ever. Think about Mod Pie, how Mudbriar advised Pinkie Pie. The best thing that Pinkie could do for Mod was to throw a surprise party she didn't have to go to. Nice drawing. Mm -hmm. Very well detailed. Yes, kids and presents hiding. Though with the position of that couch, how can you hide behind it? Assume the door's over here. Mm. And since this is radio, air quotes, um, saying that the couch faces towards the door so that when Samantha comes in, only the front of the couch is viewable. Yeah. Oh. Well, there's something that's copyrightable. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Also, here's something that is very antiquated. <laughs> mm. Most people are not familiar with these anymore. The new telephone. Not smartphone. Telephone. Wow. Mom was fed up with the old telephone. Every phone has buttons now, she said. Not that silly dial. For our younger audience members, newer phones had buttons, physical buttons, that you pushed. Older phones, called rotary phones, had a dial. You would stick your finger in at the number you wanted and then turn the dial all the way and then let go and let the dial go all the way back to the beginning before you could do the next number. I actually had one of those. And not that dull old black, said John. There are hundreds of different colors to choose from. Let's go and choose one, shall we, said Mom. So Mom and John went down to the store to look for a new phone. But when they reached the store, there were so many different telephones that they did not know which one to buy. There was a round telephone and a pale pink one that hung on the wall. There was even one with a radio and alarm clock attached. Then John saw a wonderful telephone shaped like Mickey Mouse. Oh, even put the name in. <laughs> yeah. Can we have that one, Mom? He pleaded. Please? Mom smiled. Why not? By the time they had left the store, John was dreaming of a telephone of his very own. One that looked exactly like a racing car. <laughs> well, technically, you can say stuff like, in a story, you can actually write out, this product was used here, and not have to pay the rights to do it. There's a, actually a law that actually says they, authors are free to use stuff like that. But that image of Mickey Mouse, the likeness of Mickey Mouse, is copyrighted and trademarked. Yes, but is it enough alike? It's definitely recognizable, but is it enough alike? The shaping of the face is wrong. Depending on which version of Mickey you look at, the shoes are the wrong color. I don't know. Try putting it into this recording and see if we get tagged for copyright. Shh. Uh, yeah, yeah. 
Now, all these images are usually associated with the thumbnail. <laughs> okay, now on to something even more historic, the blacksmith's silver. Hmm. There was once a blacksmith who made very special horseshoes. These shoes were special because they were made from the finest silver. I don't even know if that's practical. It's probably not practical. Yeah, how strong is silver? Stronger than gold. Yeah, I was going to say gold's pretty soft. Mm -hmm. One night, a wicked thief stole the blacksmith's silver. The blacksmith didn't know what to do. Nobody wanted iron horseshoes from them, for you could get those anywhere. He was ruined. Just then, a beautiful young girl rode up on a white horse and asked for her animal to be shod in silver. Alas, said the blacksmith, I'm afraid I cannot do it. And he explained what had happened. Fill a jug with milk, said the girl, and bring it to me. The blacksmith was mystified by her strange request, but did as he was asked. The girl took the jug and poured the milk onto the anvil, and before the astonished blacksmith could fetch a cloth to wipe it up, the spilled milk had changed into a big lump of silver. The blacksmith set to work immediately to make the white horse's shoes, which were small and dainty and unlike any he had seen before. You're the one who made them, are making them. Mm. Then the young girl sprang onto her horse, and the blacksmith noticed that it had a long, twirly horn growing out of its forehead. It wasn't a horse at all. It was a unicorn! Wowzers. Hello to stories that make no sense. Yes. Because one batch of silver that was used for one set of horseshoes is not going to get him enough silver to continue his business. Yeah, I think it was less about continuing his business and more her getting shoes for her horse. Ah, unicorn. Correction. Well, the horn was growing out of its forehead, so apparently it needed magic silver shoes in order to grow the horn. Hmm. Eh. Though in the rendering, the horse has a golden horn. It doesn't say in the writing what I, color the horn is. I, I just associated it with silver in my head, so. No, the horseshoes are silver. What's interesting is you can see a horseshoe on the ground, but you don't see any indication in the illustration that the unicorn's golden hooves have been shot in silver. Okay, I remember the next several, actually. Also, I remember this previous one, because it had a unicorn in it. Who cares how ridiculous it was? It had a unicorn in it. Yeah. All right, the duck umbrella. Gimma was given an umbrella with a duck's head handle for her birthday. She was very proud of it. The next day, the sun was shining. Quack, 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 said the duck umbrella as Gimma put on her coat. I don't need you, said Gemma. It's a sunny day. But on the way home from shopping, it poured and poured with rain. Gemma was soaked. I think that duck was telling me it would rain, said Gemma, and I didn't take any notice. Gemma was right. Every time it was going to rain, the duck umbrella would quack and Gemma would take it with her. And she never, ever got wet again. Except when she swam, took a shower. <laughs> but Was I, washing dishes. Though I must say, I like, like the action pose she's in. She's like... Pulling up, I know she's probably putting on her jacket, but it looks like she's pulling up her sleeve, getting ready to grab that duck umbrella. Like, I'm going to go, man. <laughs> it looks a lot like that, though. I think the intention was that she was smoothing down the sleeve because she's putting it on to leave because it's sunny outside and the duck umbrella is in the holder with, like, four other umbrellas. And there are three jackets hanging here along with a hat, but her jacket's also on. So did she hang the... Do the jackets get hung over the other jackets? Was hers not on a peg at all? Mm. Just a nitpick. And this has been another installment of Bedtime Tales, written by Linda Jennings, illustrated by Hilda Offen. Have you seriously not picked up this book yet? How many times do we have to put the link there before you click it and buy the book, if you're enjoying the book? I mean, come on, it's a book. You buy it, you enjoy it. You sell it or donate it or reread it 50 million times. Also, Ebates, does no one like shopping? And even if you don't like shopping, do you not like money? You know, sign up, bonus after your first purchase, cash back on all sorts of things through their website, through their app, in certain stores, physical stores where you are probably shopping. Maybe even while you're listening to this. 
Amazon and Ebates are not sponsors of or in any way affiliated with Ember's Reading Room or any content of the Lux Analysis channel. Thanks again for listening.